Hey everybody, we're going to do something different today. I uh, don't have another paintball gun to fix at the moment, but my kids broke my blower, or at least I thought they did. Uh, they were putting stuff down the, you know, the, the nozzle here. You can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. Here's the casing all torn apart. But the kids were putting stuff down the nozzle and, you know, pulling the trigger and blowing stuff out the end. You know, kid stuff. Uh, but then all of a sudden it started making a really bad noise and I'm sure you saw in the thumbnail the reason was Down in this uh, motor Housing there are a couple of screws in here. One of these had come loose and lodged itself in the fan here and Caused this to be unbalanced and when something unbalanced spins really quickly It likes to shake really violently which was then shaking the entire case and making a really terrible noise. So, uh, I'm gonna do a quick explanation of the parts. These things are actually a lot simpler than I thought they were. And then uh, I'm just gonna show you how to put it back together. All right, so if you look up here, let's see, let me tilt that back up again. So if you look up here, there is the main trigger handle and then normally in the top, there is a little button here that is for, you know, it's got a little hurricane symbol on there, so I call it turbo mode. But uh, that's the two buttons that you got. But basically, um, when you do the normal switch or the normal trigger, it messes with this. Um, let that down. So there is a potentiometer here. Let's see, what's it say? 20 amp, 36 volt DC, which is funny because this is a 60 volt setup. But I'm assuming that that 60 volt only comes into play when you hit the turbo mode. Regardless, um, trigger, the more you pull, the more it pushes down on here. It allows more voltage to go through. Uh, that voltage comes from this piece here that attaches to the main battery pack which is held back in this housing here. Um, spring, just to provide tension on the battery to help you get it out by depressing this tab here. Uh, but all of that leads down to this little power board here, which has a couple of caps on it that you can see. Uh, it's all potted together, so I'm not gonna take it all apart, but there's a heat sink, I'm assuming a circuit board inside of there. But then it sends all of that power down into the Motor here, which has a nice splined connection to the fan itself. Fan's got a little cap that goes over to keep it in place. And then this housing also has a bell-shaped inlet. Um, if you know much about aerodynamics or fluid mechanics, this bell just helps to pull in air from all around guide it through the fan housing adds a lot of static pressure and velocity to the air and then it comes out the other end here uh, across this cone which also helps to keep the flow nice and straight and smooth otherwise you'd have vortices and all kind of craziness going around um, let me know if you want to see some of the math on that and i'll try and figure that out i've been looking back through some old fluid mechanics textbooks um trying to figure out all the paintball stuff but we're going to put it back together for you real quick it's actually a pretty simple process uh just a couple things slide back into place and then you're done so if you ever have a blower making a god awful noise uh check the fan anyway so the first thing i'll do here is just slide the fan back into place this was just press fit on um, the way I got it out is you can gently pry underneath the hub itself as you spin it so you can slowly pick it up all the way around. It comes out pretty easily. Um, I needed exactly one Phillips head screwdriver to take this thing apart today. And it fit not only this cap here that keeps the fan in place, but it's used for all of the body screws. Uh, quick note, if you're looking for a hidden screw on the body, check under the label. There was one hiding. Either way, so that's put back together. 
I'm gonna go ahead and start with this kind of whole power pack setup here. So this slid into this compartment. Yeah. Actually, I'll bring the housing down here. Hopefully, I've got enough height on this tripod to do that. Let's see if I can prop that up a little bit. All right. So, let's start here. Let's bring all the cordage, all that stuff. So you gotta put your housing or your bell on here. This pin here needs to match up with this little socket down here for it. It's got a nice rubber isolation on it. Stops it from vibrating your hand too much. Uh, but just make sure those are lined up down in there and the whole thing kind of slides into place. Gotta make sure showing you backwards but it's the only way to really get this so you've just got to make sure that that goes down into place this is rotated nicely this slides back into here all of this cabling let's see I'm trying to do this in a way I can show you This switch slides back into here. That's your main switch. All this cabling has to be tucked down into the frame for when we go to put it back together here later. All right, see, that's all tucked in nice and neat. Same with this guy, that switches back in place. This little circuit board comes all the way up here. There's a couple of places in the frame for it wiring to feed down into. The main power cabling goes back along the frame here. Goes all the way down here. I'm not sure we can see that too well, but it all slides into this frame. Kind of tuck it all up into place. There's a couple spots down here where it looks like there's some tabs that you can actually kind of stick it into and they'll hold it. Make sure my switch in contact there. Okay, everything's back down in place. Uh, watch right here when you're tucking this in. This boss that's sticking up here, there's gonna be a screw trying to go in there. So you can either flip it up this way or keep it down below. I think I'll leave it up this way. Kind of bothers me a little bit that heat sink is right against these wires. Either way, that may come back later and not be a good thing. But I don't really see anywhere else for them to go. Yeah, there's nowhere else for that to go. Okay. Forget our spring block here to help the battery coming back out. And then our button 
That goes up here. See, it looks like the short tab goes in the back. There we go. There you go. Clicky, clicky. I like it. That's it, really. You've got, I'll bring it back over here. really it the only thing left to do now is to fit this little guard down on the bottom put the case back on and screw it all back down and there's about a uh, let's see a little over a dozen screws in this thing so there's my pile of fasteners uh, quick note about these little guys they go in the nose up here uh, little U-clips. It just holds the nose piece together without having to use different fasteners. Uh, but either way, yeah, you can see on the front of this case there are just places for screws everywhere. And nobody wants to see that, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video there. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope you learned something. Thanks.